Hi guys, Shiny Hunter Red here, and recently my channel has hit 100 subscribers. I know I'm a bit late, but I just wanted to formally say thank you to each and every one of you because I literally couldn't have done this without you guys. Since I've been posting my Shiny videos, I've gotten so many comments asking how I control all my games at once. So as an unofficial 100 subscriber special, I thought it'd be cool to take you guys behind the curtain and show you how I've really been doing it. Also, I just want to make a video and uh, the Shinies aren't really uh, cooperating right now. So unfortunately, let me start by quelling the rumors that I've been using the Force to control my games. As much as I wish it were true, I'm not a shiny hunting Jedi. So how am I doing it, you may ask? That would bring me to Inside Gadgets. Inside Gadgets is a website that specializes in controller modding and they have specific things for all different sorts of consoles and cartridges. Everything I use from them and other things too will all be in the description below. I will say that any modding you do is at your own risk, so please don't come after me if things go wrong. If you want to mod your systems but don't feel comfortable doing it yourself, please reach out to someone who is. Also I just should probably mention that this stuff is kind of expensive, but that's okay for me because I'm a big boy now, so I could spend big boy dollars. I ended up going with four of these flex boards for my DS lights and four of these chips for my Game Boys. What these do is basically allow the Game Boys and DS lights to become receivers, so if you have something to transmit a signal, they will pick it up. How do you transmit a signal, you may ask? The answer to that is another DS light, and this DS light is going to be our transmitter. First you'll need this, a transmitter cartridge that will go into the bottom of the DS light. You also need to get a flash cart for the top slot of the DS light. Any will do, but this is the one that I used. From their website, you'll also have to download custom software which you can load onto the flash cart. Once you have the flash cart loaded up top and the transmitter cartridge loaded below and you run the custom software, you'll get this screen. And now this screen means we're transmitting to anything on inside gadgets frequencies. And what that means is we can actually transmit to DS lights and Game Boys at the same time, which is how I did my Safari Week setup. In this screen, you'll also notice these four big blue buttons down here. These can have custom macros mapped to them, so basically, if you want a soft reset, you can press one of these and it'll press all the buttons for you at the same time. I'll also leave a link to a website that explains how to do that in the description. Also, if you're wondering, yes, this is a DS Lite with only one screen, but the reason I did that is because the top screen draws a lot of power, and by taking it off, I can actually save a lot of battery while hunting. Inside Gadgets makes a ton of other boards and chips for other systems too, including flex boards for the original DS, the fat ones. So if you're interested in making controller modded DS with a capture card, you're better off getting these. I elected for the DS Lite flex board since I prefer filming my Shiny Hunts Absol blog style. Another side note, um, there is a transmitter cart for the Game Boy Advance SP. Now this one is way easier to set up, but from my experience it doesn't work as good as the DS Lite version, you can't map custom macros to it. So I don't recommend using this one, but it is an option. Anyway, once the flex boards are installed inside the DS lights, you can't even tell they're in there unless you look at the stylus holder, then you can see it poking out. As for the SPs, well, it's a bit more obvious. There isn't enough room inside the shells for the chips to fit, so they have to be fixed to the outside, giving your Game Boys a cool cyborg vibe. The cool thing about them too is that all the buttons on the outside still work, so they can all still be played normally if you wish. So let's recap. You will need one DS Lite to be the transmitter, and for this you are going to need the flash cart for the top and the transmitter cartridge from inside gadgets for the bottom. Then for however many systems you're going to be controlling, you're going to either need a flex board or a chip depending on the compatibility of that system. Now that that's all out of the way, let's talk about my 3DS's. The good news here is that controlling these remotely is way easier to do and it probably won't cost you much if anything. Basically all you'll need is your 3DS, a computer, and a controller capable of connecting to your computer. To start, you're going to have to mod your 3DS, which if you haven't done already, you might as well, it's totally worth it. I'm not going to explain how to do it here, mainly because I forgot because I did it so long ago, but I will leave a link to a website in the description that makes it so easy to follow. I recommend using it. Once you're done modding your 3DS, you won't have to download anything else because if you follow this website's guide, input redirection will come preloaded on your modded 3DS. To start input redirection from the home screen, we're going to press left shoulder, down on the D-pad, and select, which will open this menu. Navigate to Miscellaneous Options and select Start Input Redirection. Now your 3DS is ready to go, but we're still going to need a controller. And you'll basically need any controller that's capable of connecting to your computer. I have this wired third-party Xbox 360 controller. Uh, it works perfectly. I think any controller will do though. Your computer is going to have to run a custom input redirection program. This program made by TuxSH is what we're going to use, and the link to it is in the description too. 
Once you open it, you're going to have to find your 3DS's IP address, which can be found in that same menu on the top right. Put your 3DS's IP address into the computer program and when you use your controller, you should be able to control your 3DS. If you want to do this with multiple 3DS's at the same time, you're going to have to run multiple instances of that program, but you'll just have to change the IP address between them. The one drawback to this method is that we can't open that modded menu when the 3DS is in DS mode, so that means we can't use input redirection in Gens 4 and 5. For that reason, I went down the rabbit hole and found inside gadgets, and to this day my shiny hunts have never been the same. And that's basically everything. Now I'm sure there's something I missed or something I didn't explain enough, so if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. This video ended up being a little longer than I expected, but that's just because I tried to be as thorough as I could. Hopefully the shinies will start being nicer to me so I can post again. Until then, I'm Shiny Hunter Red, and I'll see you guys in the next video.